What's up everyone? It's Ty with Hardy House Games. I'm very excited for this video as it is one of my top five favorite board games. Today, we're gonna be going over Everdell. Everdell is a beautifully crafted game with a giant tree as its centerpiece, but what does it take to get to the top? There are four main things to focus on during the game, and I'm gonna teach you each and every one on how to master them. Those four things are constructions versus critters, events, workers, and your city versus other cities. First of all, construction versus critters. You really wanna to aim to get construction so that way they can get the respective critter. Getting free critters means you have extra berries as resources in case you need to buy a very expensive critter that is very worth it for your city. At the very beginning of the game, you're gonna to wanna to focus green construction, especially the resin refinery or the mine. After that, you're looking for the farm or the twig barge. Of course, getting those critters that go along with them. There are also very important beginning buildings you're gonna to wanna to look for. These include the inn, the clock tower, the university, or the courthouse. You could also use the crane to buy those constructions. All of those cards will continually benefit you throughout the entire game. Of course, get those critters that go along with that with that construction. If these cards are difficult for you to get, the school and the theater are also pretty good picks. During the mid to late game, you're gonna need to look for the Evertree, the palace, or the castle. These are incredibly valuable constructions and give you amazing critters. And if you haven't already heard, my brother and I, of course, Hardy House Games, we're working on our own board game. It's called Rus Time of Troubles. It's an old timey Russian themed game about a peasant that deceives his way into becoming the king. It's a fun bluffing game. There's an engine building aspect to it. Reviewers have compared it as a coup meets Euro mechanics. So click on the link, put your email in for the newsletter. This will help you get all the updates on the game. We would be so grateful for your support. Okay, so secondly, you're going to be looking at the events. Events are a great way to get those last minute points that are going to get you a little bit ahead. So always have them in the back of your mind. At the beginning of the game, make sure you read all these special event cards here at the top of the tree and see if you already have in your hand some of the respective construction or critters that go along with that event. But in all honesty, if you have a purple card like the Castle, Palace, Evertree that are going to get you more points than a special event card, then don't even bother with it. I've won without getting special event cards. There's really no point in using space in your city to get a tiny critter or construction for a special event when you could fill that space with a high value purple card. Really you just have to weigh your options. Now the common event cards are valuable, especially if you're going for the Castle king combo, they're going to increase even more. But if not, honestly, you don't even need to get any of the event points. I'm not saying don't go for them. I'm saying you have to weigh your options. Look at your city, what spaces you can use a worker for this or use it for a, a special building. Too many times people hyper focus on these special events. They really want to get the points for it and it ends up hurting them. Which brings me to the next section of the workers. You have to think of it this way. That worker could get you some stone instead of an event card that would give you you a very valuable card, let's say the university. The university already gives you three points, which also gives you the opportunity for the doctor, even more points that you can get with that, both with great abilities. These options give you more momentum in the game instead of using that critter to go for an event over here, which is only worth three. Workers are limited and you wanna fill up towards the beginning of the game to give you momentum. Options give you abilities. These abilities lead to more points and more options, while some other players, all they did was get the harvest card and now they have three additional points. Of course, you cannot forget about the spaces on the outside, the force cards. Make sure you're putting your workers first out here because they're limited and others are going to use it. Now to the fourth section, looking at your city versus other cities. You know you're doing good if your city alone is giving you about 35 to 38 points by the end of the game. I will almost always avoid zero point cards unless for some reason the points add up from what I'm given that I can get a special event card which gives me points. So you have to look at your options because zero point cards are a waste space in the city most of the time. You need to pay really close attention to what your opponents are building and what special event cards are here and determine if they're already going for an event card that you thought you were going to get. You don't want to waste your time battling with them to get that event card. Instead, use your resources towards high valued cards, critters, constructions. I'm always going to recommend getting the harvester and gatherer combo, the wanderer. These critters are extremely valuable as they don't add space to your city. Now your city is getting additional points and not taking up space. It's basically like an event card. And always keep track of that fool
cool card. Of course, you don't want it on your city. I hate the dungeon card. I think it's a waste of space in my city and I hate having to use it on a fool card. Definitely give that away to your closest opponent. So that's everything you need to know about how to boost your strategy in beating everybody else at the table. If you've thought of some other really fun combination in your city that you want to share, please let me know. I'd love to try it out. Don't forget to follow for more, subscribe. We all love board games here, but we especially love winning them.